Welcome everyone to Growth via Massive Customer Experience Savings and Wazy Lease Expected. This is an encore presentation from my CX Leaders Advanced Workshop in Florida in May for the CXPA conference. And I was a little surprised to see how many people were interested in customer experience savings because most of the metrics we hear about are about recommendations, revenue uptick, all of that type of thing. Of course, there are some customer experience metrics that deal with savings such as first contact resolution, but we may not be thinking of that uh, specifically as savings. So what comes to mind in terms of customer experience savings? Generally, things that touch the customer. How can we make those processes more efficient? So we're looking at how to outsource customer service, uh, how to uh, make our customer service more efficient, uh, how to digitalize the entire customer journey, things like that. But I'm thinking about customer experience savings more massively than that. I'm thinking about customer experience savings in terms of permanently removing the pebbles in customer's shoes. So uh, this is a, a quick run through of what I presented earlier. And the main thing to keep in mind with all of this is taking on your CEO's mindset. When you think about how your C-suite is rewarded or um, judged by the outside world, the investor community, the board of directors, and so on, uh, well, it's all about, are they creating sustained advantages? Are they maximizing growth, which has the double side of revenue growth and profit growth? And to do that, are they increasing speed of money in the bank? So is that cycle time getting shorter? Are they minimizing costs so that they have more agility as an organization? This is a agile organization thinking of how quickly you can adapt to things that are happening in the market, how quickly you can be proactive and beat your competitors to uh, solutions for customers. And how are you minimizing risks? And customer experience actually has a role, a huge role in all of those care abouts that CEOs have so if we're thinking more like the CEO and the C-suite, we can take on a broader uh, idea of customer experience. Now, this actually came to a real clarity for me on my way to Florida because we were delayed by 18 hours. And I'm only coming from Arizona, for heaven's sakes. I can drive to, uh, to Florida in less than 18 hours, I believe, from Phoenix. So, um, you know, what happened was they had a part that was uh, messed up in the preceding city, Las Vegas. And when the plane came to uh, Phoenix, it was already three hours late. They put us on the plane for two hours. We sat there. And then they said, well, this part is still messed up or our maintenance or whatever. And the flight crew has their time limit. So there was all this uh, kind of a domino effect. They told us to get off the plane and go into a line. And... Uh, well, uh, we would be taking off bright and early the next morning. In total, there were like, I think, seven announcements of a new time to change because we were on the plane and in the airport for quite a long time the next morning as well. So it just got me thinking about what is the cust chief customer officer role with that type of a situation? Because sure enough, every company has those types of situations, even my own. Um, you know, nobody's perfect and uh, we all... Uh, rely on a lot of things that uh, there's moving parts. So be thinking more broadly about the customer experience. Should the chief customer officer have some say over uh, spare parts inventory and the maintenance people's certification levels so that things can be prevented? We'll be thinking about the flip side. All of these operational gains that we just looked at a moment ago have another side of the coin. A lot of times a new world is opened up. So if we are uh, looking at this like Russian dolls, peeling the onion, uh, going into what's behind that and what's behind that and what's behind that, then we're thinking about what is needed in order to get less customer churn. Either we can go out and tell the customers, please don't churn, here's an incentive, that's kind of an expensive way to run your business. But it's less expensive actually to 
reduce the demand for support. That does not mean making it hard to get support, right? Doesn't mean having people go stand in line for two, with 200 people. It just means give the information or uh, reduce the the, uh, the issue in it in and of itself, so that there is less need for support, right? So if we had less returns, less refunds, less remedies, and fewer and shorter escalations, then obviously we would be achieving this top goal and the flip side of it as well. So let's take it down to the actual heart of the Russian doll. So what you have to do to get there, if we take it down one more level and see what do we really need to do? We need to instill a lifetime value mindset and a right the first time mindset among all employees across the organization. You see in the airline example, it wouldn't have been enough to just influence the right the first time mindset among the people at the gate, the people at the service desk, the pilot and flight attendants. No, we needed to in that example and almost everything that happens in your company as well, instill a right the first time mindset among the inventory people, the maintenance people and so on. When the customer experience team is thinking more broadly about influencing every group to be more preventive, then we may see less headaches like that. So of course, uh, looking at processes of all kinds, not just the ones that touch the customer, but most importantly, the ones that are at the root of the pebbles in customer's shoes. So peel and peel and peel the onion, just like these uh, Russian dolls, to get to the real heart of it. The little guy right there is the heart of it. And this means we need to relook at performance criteria. Don't just put the performance criteria at the outcomes because it's best to make sure that you are putting performance criteria at the roots, the little guy here. And this actually makes it more uh, actionable and purposeful for your employees, I think. Here's how you're going to be looking at the cost of that root cause, right? So you're looking at what is the prevalent issue and how much is it costing us in customer service for that issue? This is the cost of poor experience. It's something that is sunk because you don't have any way of, of getting out of it, even if you digitalize or off, off so, offshore or whatever. Um, it's still going to be costing you a tremendous amount, and especially in trust. This here we cannot underestimate, and it's hard to quantify, but it's important to put down a few things in there, even if they're not numbers. What are some things that you know about or issues or uh, areas that uh, are concerning with the way that customers see your company and your trust versus their other options? How do I make this happen? I've used this with every single type of functional area and companies with hundreds of groups and it's magical. Do data mining, voice mining, uh, text mining and so on. So with the five whys analysis, when you're including someone from HR, someone from sales, someone from a service, someone from engineering or operations, you're having diverse viewpoints in doing the five whys uh, exercise, you will be pretty accurate in that conclusion of the fifth why. So for each fifth why issue, you wanna make sure that the action plan matches that. If they don't match, then you've got garbage, okay? So we wanna make sure it matches because that's scientific now. We've gone to the a Pareto analysis, and then the five whys analysis, and then the action plan that matches the fifth why, it's all scientific. So here you're going to be tracking, what are you mistake proofing? Uh, that, that's the root cause goal. How are you, what are you going to track here in the root cause as far as we're stopping that? We're, we're reducing the incidence of this root cause. So you're, and this is very effective when you show it in every staff meeting and every ops review so that the top leaders in the meeting can re remove roadblocks and keep it rolling and maintain account accountability as well as praise for progress made.
So we use this uh, extensively and we put these type of root cause uh, mistake proof goals as what goes into people's bonus, what goes into people's uh, performance reviews and recognition programs instead of the survey results, it's extremely more effective than using survey results on people's bonuses and recognition and so forth, because they are controlling this and they're it shows what they're doing about it at the root cause instead of just slapping more bandages on diseases. So uh, in closing, I just wanted to show you that you can translate whatever you're doing in savings and gains to financial ratios to speak executive's language. So for example, these are the things that we, these are a very small example of hundreds of things that we did using the techniques I've just talked to you about to create what I call experience management annuities. Because when we took this time for customer service by down by 16, it saved customers time, time and resources. That was marketing and sales gold. We could say that type of thing that would really impress customers, show them that we they can trust us, we're there for them, their prosperity is our prosperity, but in turn, it saved us a lot of time. And it also made the money come into the bank quicker and that's what sales velocity is, right? Because we didn't have to do yet another presentation, yet another, another proof point and so on to expand the business or to uh, retain those customers they wanted to give us their money. Therefore, we had increased sales velocity, earnings per share, cumulative average growth rate, return on assets, and so on. So you can use a translation box like that to speak to whatever you're doing. You don't have to actually do the math. You just need to speak to it when you're speaking to, to executives. They may ask you for examples. My go-to is to say, Wonderful. Who in finance could I partner with to get a start on that? And I would try to get the finance people to uh, do most of the calculations and such because that's their their forte. So what I did in customer experience uh, leadership that really made massive CX gains is we were looking at operational savings and organizational savings at the root cause and what we needed to do in customer insights to uh, collect those stimulating data points for the, these guys to care about it, how we were um, clarifying that to show them, here's here's the, the cause and effect, here are some of the patterns that are going on, how we're communicating that and championing it, hand-holding each group to do their part on the root cause at the bottom level here. And then we were talking about it to the C team in terms of things like earnings per share, return on assets, and so on. So it really connects the dots for people. And you can um, report things in terms of how many remedial costs were stopped, how much budget was freed up, how, how many resources did you redeploy, how did you free up customers to do more with their time, add up all of that. And that's the value of your customer experience savings. I want to thank you for joining me today. Be thinking about these ways that we just talked about as your untapped opportunities for your CX strategy. You can join me every week uh, for mastermind sessions. We're taking templates like we just talked about today and actually working them through in a 90 minute session. Um, there's a lot of different ways that Clear Action does this, and the Experience Value Exchange is one other place where templates and other hands-on opportunities are there to put into practice all of the things that are on the CCXP blueprint that are at these various levels of fundamental, intermediate, expert, and executive. So just bringing it all to life in terms of the real uh, best practices, we'd say maybe superior practices, compared to current commonly practiced best practices. Okay, so I'll send you the presentation if you attend it here or if you request it, I'd be glad to send you that. And let's keep the conversation going. You can contact me by email or direct message on LinkedIn or WhatsApp. See you later.